how to change your thermostat set point schedule so that you don't have heating or cooling when you have natural ventilation in mixed mode operation. There's a, a little bit more effort here because the heating and cooling schedule already has a setback and so this is going to get a little bit complex. So this might be actually easier to use the text editor than the IDF editor. I'm going to save this file and open it in the, using the text editor here and going to scroll down to the schedule for school heating and cooling lights occupancy cooling so I'm going to take this and the heating and copy them Control C, and I'm going to go down to my ventilation schedule that I just made. This would be a little bit easier if I have it handy. So I'm going to copy these here. And the first thing you should do is make sure to rename these schedules. If you have two schedules with the same name, the um, Energy Plus won't know which one to reference, and it will you'll have a, an error. Um, the nice thing about the, those errors, though, is that they're really easy to understand. It usually just says, hey, you've got two identical names, so rename one of them. Uh, I'm going to change this to school he he heating set point mixed mode schedule. I'm going to change the cooling to cooling mixed mode schedule. And there's a technique here for um, making sure that you don't forget anything, which is to take your natural ventilation schedule and copy this whole thing, um, all the dates starting at through March 15th, down to your cooling schedule. And I'm going to make a, a few spaces here so I know kind of where I've left off. And I'm going to copy that right there. I want the cooling to turn off when the ventilation is on. And so I can use these dates to um, help me as a guide. So through March 15th for all days until 7 p.m. Uh, or 7 a.m. It's off. It's actually off all day. So what that means is I can forget about this and just use my typical cooling schedule for these times. So I'm going to put a big space here, delete all these guys, and then put another big space for May 15th. And I'm going to take my typical um, spring schedule here and copy it exactly as it is. So all this stuff, I'm going to copy that right into this space. And instead of through June 30th, I just want to do it through March 15th. So we're good there. And actually, you know, just to make things a little bit simple here, I'm going to delete the summer design day. We don't need this. We're not referencing it in this particular file. So we're just going to use the this um, weekends um, and all other days. So those are good. So we're good until March 15th. Then the next set of days is March, or, I'm sorry, May 15th. And through May 15th, for all days until 8 a.m. it's off the, uh, the the ventilation is off and then from 8 to 6 p.m. it's on so we want to reverse that for the cooling and the way to do that is I'm going to take I'm going to copy my cooling set points here and copy them right into that schedule. On the weekends, instead of just having a setback of 27, I actually now want the schedule to um, reflect the natural ventilation schedule. Um, and so what I'm going to do is take out these two lines until 24, 27, and use these lines. So until 6 a.m., we're going to have our normal setback of 27. And then between 6 a.m. and 9 p.m., instead of cooling the place down to 24, I'm actually going to have an even larger setback. That setback I'm going to put at 31. 
because I put the natural ventilation um, schedule on until 30 degrees. So the what this means is that the windows will stay open until 30 degrees, and then at 31 degrees, the cooling system will turn on. And then at night, when the natural ventilation is no longer available, I'm going to have the air conditioning come on if it's above 27. So we want this to actually happen for all days, not just the weekends. So I'm going to erase this for the weekend's line. Now we need to make the rest of the schedule for uh, until the summer starts in June 30th, uh, or summer holidays. And so what we want then is the same schedule that we originally set, because now there's no ventilation. We want this schedule until June 30th there. Until June 30th. And the spaces matter here. This is code, so make sure they all align. But it's the same schedule as we had before. And we're good until summer break. The next time we've got mixed mode operation occurs of September 1st through October 15th. To, um, to make that, we can use the same schedule that we used from uh, March 15th to May 15th. This schedule here, this should end on September 1st. We should be good there. The next mixed mode operation period is from September 1st to, to October 15th. So we can go back to uh, our last mixed mode operation, which is there from May 15th, and copy this down to here and change this now to October 15th and oops, we should be good to go. It's good to check over these things but it looks like that's the right schedule. And then the last one is until December where we go back to our regular setback schedule and that is this original schedule, the first schedule we had there. So December 31st, and this is back to our original cooling schedule. So now I'm going to erase all of this stuff, which was the remnants of our natural ventilation schedule, and I'm going to erase all this stuff, which is the remnants of our cooling schedule. And this is super, super important. Make sure you've got not a comma, but a semicolon as your last entry there. That's a signal to Energy Plus that that object is complete. So now we've got a really complex cooling schedule. But the nice thing is the heating schedule should be very easy because we can take all of this logic and just apply different set points to it. I'm going to take this and move it down. and I'm going to notice that my set points are 21 degrees and my setback is 16. And that's consistent throughout. So I'm going to copy my cooling schedule as it is, like that. I'm going to copy it down there. And if I remember right, it's at 21 and 16. So I can go through and change all the 27s to. 16 and all of the 24s to 21s and all the 31s I want to make to a setback to the natural ventilation and the low point of natural ventilation I think was 22 let's check that right now I'm going to open this in the IDF editor and go down to my ventilation object and yeah it's 22 degrees I might make that 21 degrees as a set point. If you feel that that's too cold, then you know you probably want to increase this to 22 and increase your uh, natural ventilation to 23. So you have a little bit of play in between the two. Then I'm going to set this back to 16. This one to 16. This one to 16. 24 would be 21. I think you get the point here. So I'm going to finish doing this on my own. I'll save this as an IDF file and fast forward. Opening from the IDF editor, 
So let's inspect that and make sure I uh, double check to make sure nothing went wrong. The cooling mix mode schedule is here, the heating mix mode schedule is here, and the natural ventilation schedule is here, March 15th to May 15th. And we've got the setbacks correct for the thermostats. And it's a really long schedule, but I think that this is right. We should double check this on the output. Now, before we hit simulate, it's important to make sure that all the objects are correctly tagged to these schedules. We made three schedules. Let's make sure that they're, that they're correct, uh, the objects are correct. So let's go first to the ventilation schedule. And for our um, natural ventilation, we've already put the nat vent schedule on those. For the HVAC system, ah, we haven't yet put this on the new set point thermostat. So we need to navigate down to our mix mode. This is heating mix mode schedule and cooling mix mode schedule. Okay, so that should be good now. I'm going to save this. I'm going to hit simulate and hopefully we'll get no errors as it goes through. The simulation's done. We got no errors and so we can take our variables and copy them into the dashboard again. And let's see what we got. So if we go to the year tab here, we can see that the, the schedule is working here, that there is a lot less cooling now during um, mid-March to mid-May, and there's also a lot less cooling from uh, the end of June until the beginning of October. That's what we wanted to see. So our natural ventilation is theoretically working well. Um, so let's go over and see how it's actually working here. You can see that, well, first looking at the heat map, the, um, of course, when the HVAC systems are on, we're doing great. That's good. <laughs> no surprise there. When there's no HVAC systems on, like here and here, it is a little warm, and actually we can see just how warm if we go up here. It's getting up into the low 30s, high 20s, low 30s. That's pretty warm. One very interesting thing is if you um, have a, a lot of air movement, then that will perceptually cool the occupants. So it's not going to change the actual temperature in the space. It would still be the, the same 30 degrees or so but with um, some like a ceiling fan or a table fan you can actually get about two degrees worth of comfort out of that two degrees celsius and as luck would have it most of our overheated hours are plus two degrees over um, and so all this yellow the light yellow region we could consider comfortable if we had a ceiling fan or a desk fan uh, next to or uh, sort of fanning each occupant. We should also look and make sure that our ventilation airflow is working. It look, looks like it's, it's doing perfectly. You can see that the windows are opening up during these periods that we programmed in and here, and we're getting a whole lot less ventilation um, airflow through here. So good. I think uh, everything appears to be working as we programmed it. Uh, give yourselves a pat on the back if you've gotten this far. Um, and now I'm going to print this to PDF. I will save the images. And in the next video, we'll look at how to understand the effects of air movement by looking at modeling ceiling or table fans.